always got to yeah. be one. Right? <laughs> always got to be one bead playing with the mic. I think you'll enjoy this video. We're out here at Circle City Sat Singer Farm. My first time trying to uh, harvest from a flow hive. My friend Jimmy's going to show me how it's done. And uh, this is the hive that was uh, pretty mean a couple months back, and it's doing a lot better now. You can see it's full of bees. Uh, bees all over the front. It was full of honey a couple of weeks ago. Not quite ready to harvest, but I'm sure it's ready to go now. So we're going to check it out. Got some mowers in the background. Here's Jimmy right here, and here are the bees in the flow hive. And I'm going to let him kind of explain briefly what we're going to do with them, how he harvests, what he's found to work the best as he's had this flow hive. Hey, so what we're going to do is we're going to take off the top box here and We've found that the greater slope that we have, you know, going down, let gravity work for us. At this, how it is right now is a pretty slow process. Um, so we incline it a little more to get the flow to go quicker. Um, so we're going to take this box off right here, and we're going to transfer it to our cinder blocks over here, which we put on a hill, and it will be sloping downward, and then we'll start the the honey process it's pretty heavy yeah okay oh, yeah. pretty yeah. heavy it's got a good weight so all right we'll get set up on the uh, stand and we'll check it out all right so what we're gonna do here is there's a there's a cap up top and a cap in the bottom. The cap up top is where you put the, they call it the key. You put the key in and we will turn it here in a minute. And then the cap on the bottom is where the honey flows out. And the flow hive has a special, a specialty designed pipe that you stick in that has a little rivet on the bottom that you stick in the bottom and it kind of slides under the, the comb to eliminate honey from falling out. So next, we put the key in the top. Um, well, in the top, but there's two parts. There's a top portion and a bottom portion to the, the cap of this thing. And so what you do is you slide the key in the bottom and you just twist it. Now, the twisting we have found out to be difficult sometimes and sometimes easy so what we do now is just we start it we just do a, a slight crank and it kind of loosens it up and we just give it a second to and I don't know if you can see on the video but you can see it start coming down the front and we actually have we have some honey flowing out already so what it does is it cracks the cells on the inside and it just it's supposed to drop to the middle and then flow right out. And with the gravity, it's going to speed it up. And what I do is I just drain it into a little carton here, but I put a filter, and it has helped me keep the bees out of the, the honey because they seem to enjoy it sometimes. Um, so after we let a little come out, um, which this is probably good actually, it's, it's flowing nicely today actually. We'll just give it a big crank and um, be in the microphone make it a <laughs> so we have a good a decent flow going on right now um, but I'm just gonna I'm gonna crank this all the way and I usually start on the left do the left side and you can hear it pop when you get a good crank in it and then I take it over to the right side and do the same thing and once you just turn it all the way, it will start coming out here soon. And I mean, it's starting to pick up right now, the flow. You think it's flowing freely because it's warm today, it's kind of hot? Yeah, it's definitely, you can t definitely tell the weather's a little warmer. I've done it in colder weather where it's, the cranks is a little, it's a little tougher. Um, typically, it comes out a little quicker. We didn't check it, but depending on the size of it. Inside, 
got the flow hive in the frames. You can kind of see it maybe over here a little better. It's just you can tell. One bee. It's always got to yeah. be one, right? <laughs> always got to be one bee playing with the mic. Um, and sometimes when I get impatient, I'll just go to the back and tip it up a little more. You mentioned earlier to me before we started that sometimes you have a little dripping around the sides. Yeah. What do you think causes that? Um, well, first, I don't... So a little it, bit yeah, it's not a perfect science, and you can see right some dripping down. Um, I think, because it's supposed to all go towards the middle in the center, and if it just runs down the side of the frame, it just goes straight out. Um, that's I love doing it on the the hive, so if it drips down, the bees can, the bees can still get it, but this they'll process still, is just easier. They'll still get it, though. They'll come and find it. Look how pretty that honey is. That is some beautiful honey. So these bees are located on a Satsuma farm. For those who may not be familiar, Satsumas are like, what are they like? They're like a tangerine. A tangerine, and they peel really easy. And they bloom, they're, they're supposedly self-pollinating, right, Jimmy? But, yeah, they, but yeah. they, bees do like them, and so this honey may have, we'll call it a Satsuma blossom taste to it, a, a citrus, you know, flower mm -hmm. taste to it anyway. It, it's it is, gonna be really it's good. It's beautiful, I'm though. About it. I'm going to taste it. That is very good, honey. It's excellent. And we've had a privet flow out here too with the, the privet blooming, and so a lot of this is probably privet as well. Pretty exciting stuff. And I and I can give it another. Sometimes if you crank it more. Uh, up a little bit. Yeah. This is definitely easier than the traditional way, but it would be difficult, I think, to do this if you have a ton of hives to really be efficient with it. Yeah, I agree. And just with a few hives, you know, they've gotten fine out here. I think it works fine. It works pretty well. It's kind of a fun way to do it. And the other thing, too, if, if we had a bigger container, we could do multiple at a time as well. Um, you have more than one or two? Yeah, they came with, like, three. Oh, okay. Um, but... To me, it, I lose lose control sometimes, and then honey starts going everywhere. And it's actually it's coming out at a good yeah, good rate up, now. It's definitely picked up its velocity and amount. Uh, there comes some beeswax and stuff maybe coming in with it. Yeah, it's actually it's coming out well now. That's really good. That's why they call it the flow hive, I guess. The bees have noticed something's going on. They're kind of running around on the top of the frames a little bit. And we're in frame number two. It is a fairly slow process, but it's, it's really kind of cool. I think it's kind of fun for like a hobby beekeeper or someone that has, you know, maybe even up to five or ten hives. You know, but it's kind of, it is kind of a slow process. And so it will be tough to do on a huge scale, but definitely a neat concept and I think another thing that people uh, tend to do is they think that if you have a flow hive you just stick bees in there and collect honey but you do still have to manage your bees and so that's my biggest issue I think is make sure you manage your bees and keep them healthy and then they'll produce the honey for you that you need yeah, that one that one's flowing well right now yeah this one's really doing and I did taste this honey earlier and it is very very good it's kind of a the yellow color. You look in the container, it's got a little bit of an orange tint to it. Maybe that's some of that Satsuma nectar coming in there from their blooms. But it's very good. It has a little bit of a unique taste, and I guess it's probably that the Satsuma blooms. It doesn't taste strictly like the privet honey or a lot of what I get. So Jimmy just mentioned he feels like it might be backed up a little bit and Tell us why you think that, Jimmy. Um, well, if you look up here close, there's, there's not much air gap in, in there, which is telling me that we, I may have cranked it too quickly. And so I think what's happening is it's getting backed up and it's just coming off the sides a little quicker than the last one. So, you know, that's definitely a lesson as well. You just want to keep a good, good 
I hate to say flow to it, um, but a good rate <laughs> so it doesn't get, because there's a lot of honey up in here waiting to come out, so. so. This is your third year, I guess, having these last year you didn't harvest, did you? Nothing, no. So the first year you harvested a little bit, so really this is kind of a, still a new, and the a first thing year we had no this. clue what we were doing. <laughs> Well, beekeeping is an experience thing for sure, experience endeavor. There's still a lot of things I don't have a clue about, I think. There's half gallon here. And then just... Look how pretty that honey is. It's beautiful. I don't know if I've ever had any really that exact color when I've harvested, so it's got to have some satsuma influence there. I say that, I don't know, but it just looks a little bit more orange than mine usually does. Mine's either a real light color or amber or pretty dark. It's usually not that orange color. We're on the third uh, frame here, and it's uh, been really kind of cool. It's draining out, flowing out pretty quickly. It's been kind of fun, a good experience. Say words for the wise, Jimmy. Um, you know, I would say you just got to be patient with these. They're definitely... It's a slow process to get the honey out, but at the same time, you don't have to, put in, you know, put in a centrifuge and spin it off. Um, I would definitely say, you know, they are expensive, and it's going to, I mean, they're costly. So if you, you want to do a lot of hives, it's probably not. We're just doing it for a hobby. I love it because, um, I mean, I could do this all day, too. I could just watch the honey come out. It's addictive. Yeah. <laughs> sure does. Any, uh, anything with bees gets addictive to me. Right now, out of the three that we've done, this one's probably flowing the fastest uh, so far. Um, but, you know, I guess the only thing I would change and what I'll probably do next time is get two going at the same time just to sure. speed up the process uh, and get a bigger jar so I can fit two waterfalls of honey. Um, it's always an experiment, always trying new things. Well, I'm going to get out of here once again. We're out here at Circle City Satsuma. This is Jimmy Riggs. He and his uh, a partner, uh, Philip Dozier, uh, kind of it's Philip's place out here, but they kind of work together on this farm, uh, raising the Satsumas and the bees. And so um, it's a lot of fun. It's been, I appreciate you letting me come out, no Jimmy, problem. and let me work with your hives and kind of it's been fun playing in these things. And I've learned a lot. And so uh, just kind of what I think about this thing is, you know, there's, I think there's nothing wrong with these flow hives. I know there's kind of a diff, some people have different opinions and attitudes about them, but hey, if you're willing to work the bees and if, if it's something you want to do, I say go for it. Give it a shot. It's been kind of fun. So we're going to sign off here and just we'll move on to the next video. Thanks for checking us out and, and thanks for watching. Thank you. All right. Bye-bye.